You're watching live at Spectrum tonight, Frank and Dan Musil. Please welcome your host, Breck Lover. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Welcome to Live at Spectrum, the show made in Gippsland by Gippslanders, supporting Gippsland musicians. Uh, the rain's been coming in horizontally today. There's snow down to 400 metres. Must be spring in Gippsland, just as usual, the usual sort of weather. Uh, just a quick shout-out before we start tonight. On Friday night, I did a gig, and uh, I think I was talking too much during the gig. Probably should have been playing more music. But during the gig, I said, hey, everybody, make sure you're watching Live at Spectrum on Sunday night, 7.30. And someone yelled out, boring. So thanks very much for that, and uh, I hope you're watching tonight. Speaking of boring, my friend on the mic tonight, Mr. Trent McCurdy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> sorry, mate, sorry, mate. I have been caught a lot worse. Now, I almost I feel like I've got a new guy in front of me because this is the first show you've done without your beard. I know. It's, uh, it's a little bit intimidating. I feel a little bit naked, actually. But, yeah, I decided the beard had to go. The, uh, the greys were starting to come out. And <laughs> oh I had to get rid of them. Put some beard dye in no, there. No, my, my daughter said every time I kissed them, it was getting too scratchy, Dad. So happy Father's Day. Beard's gone. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it feels good, though. We've got a very uh, prac show for you, though, tonight. Okay? We do. And look, we want to hear from everybody who's watching tonight. And the best way to get in touch is either by leaving a message on our Facebook live stream. We'll uh, read it out on air. Or you can text it to us, 0411 If you want to send a picture of how you're watching the show or just a message, we'd love to hear from you. Oh, and just quickly, we are... Also, uh, have great behind-the-scenes stuff on Snapchat and Instagram, so just search for Live at Spectrum. Yeah, and also we're live on TRFM tonight, so good evening to listeners out there and the whole beard thing, then they'll be just listening going, well, what are you talking about your beard for? What's the point of that? <laughs> anyway, let's on with the show. Now, our first guest is an acoustic musician with various musical tastes, from traditional Celtic to stomping blues. His songs often are inspired by the Gippsland community and has taken up opportunities to tell those stories internationally. Be ready to be whisked away with Dan Musil. Cheers, everyone. Oh, hello, everyone out there. This first song's called All Aboard. Before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge that we're on Gala Kunai country, on stolen land. All aboard, join the horde To a life we can't afford Roll up, follow suit, get in line Don't stop to think or you'll get left behind Well you can never have enough So can I sell you one more drink? Think not of what you've got but what you're not Don't think of what could go wrong We'll be long gone by the time wrong comes to be And in any case we'll face no misery Cause fine ink can set us free from responsibility And consequence, you'll be richer if you follow us Count dollars in all cents All aboard, join the horde to a life we can't afford Roll up, follow suit, get in line Don't stop or think cause you'll get left behind hey. So full of holes may sink or it may burn But listen and you'll learn that that's the least of your concerns Cause you're ugly, fat, poorly equipped, falling behind the pack Don't forget that life's a race and your place last And your face mask ain't as pretty as your friends And no glass slipper fits But don't worry, find some money and I'll sell you a quick fix All aboard, and join the horde and To a life we can't afford Roll up, follow suit, get in line Don't stop to think or you'll get left behind Well, we 
better dream of bars and house of cars It's to the top we scream Bloody bones as stepping stones Knives out we'll climb until we die In the race to cut our own slice of that pie up in the sky Collectively individuals all striving for our prize Individually collecting all bait thrown before our eyes Individual cogs together we turn before this beast we're in But for whom do these cogs really spin? All the board join the horde and to a life we can't afford. Roll up, follow suit, get in line. Don't stop to think, or you get left behind. All the board and join the horde and to a life we can't afford. Roll up, follow suit, get in line. Don't stop or think because you get left behind.
Thanks. I'd like to welcome up my very good friend and outstanding musician, Bo Atkinson. Who, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I've been living in Moore for a few years now and was lucky enough to um, chance across Bo at a time when I really wanted to play some more music with people and saw Bo playing music at, uh, at the gallery down in Moore and uh, thought we've got to start playing and we, and we have. It's been great. Cheers. So um, we're actually going to play one of Bo's to start off now. Anything you want to say about it? Uh, I think it speaks for itself. Cheers, mate. Some out there who wish for us to brutalize. You might think it's happening to only them and have robbed their lives. Treating people in your main lab where we to get the humanized. If we can't look at them and see ourselves. Open the power rise What's the hope for in this world if we were recognized? Treating all with dignity is the one thing that's dignified. Harming each other harms ourselves not how much. Night. You can silence some, but not for long as humans want to humanize. What happens to them then happens to us? What happens to them then happens to us? What happens to them then happens to us? How was that? Dan Musil? I'm saying that correct, aren't I? Yeah, now. that'll do. That'll do? <laughs> now give us, give us your last name. How are we saying it? I said it wrong for most of my life. It's Musil, apparently. Grandparents, in, if you're listening. Musil. Hopefully they'll get the ticket of approval. Musil. <laughs> what, where's, what's the origins of Musil? It's Czech. It's a Czech name. Czech name. No worries. Because mm. I've been doing the Gippsland Gig Guide for the last year, mm. and I've been saying Dan Musil, haven't I? That's what I said as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> And uh, Bo Atkinson as well, coming in on the guitar as well. So another round of applause for the guys. Doing a lot of good job. 
Now, Dan, as you're tuning there, uh, I was actually unsure if you'd actually make it today because you had to play football yeah. today for, for Morwell and we were worried about injuries. How'd you go? Yeah, we lost, so that's the, um, that's the biggest disappointment, but um, I've survived to play tonight, so that's, that's uh, you know. Did you have to avoid all the hardball gets today? No, 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 we went, we went all in. <laughs> yeah. We didn't come up trumps, though, so... Next which, year. which makes for a very interesting audience uh, interaction now because uh, we love people sending in photos and all your teammates are currently celebrating the end of season mm. and I reckon by this time of night they'd be uh, well and truly up to some mischief and we, we might get some really interesting yeah. photos. So if you're listening on TRFM right now, you really want to get onto liveaspectrum.com.au because anything could happen from here on in. Is that right? No, the Twos boys will be preparing for next week. Oh, OK. No, sorry. <laughs> That's right. yeah. No problem. Now, the, the, the songs you've been playing then... Uh, mm on the lap steel guitar mm. here. How did you get into this particular instrument? Um, I played guitar for a while and, and loved, fell in love with the blues and started playing bottleneck slide guitar where you whack your tube on the finger. And then I, playing football, um, as, a, as a younger person, had, a, um, had an injury which stopped me playing guitar for a while, which was awful. It was, um, yeah, really hard work. So I couldn't play guitar and had to keep playing music and whacking it on my lap allowed me to play with a straight wrist and. It was kind of a... Was it RSI? It was a broken finger? Oh, yeah, it was a... It was a I just injured tendons and didn't, they didn't heal properly and it took me a while to get back. Yeah. So, so how, what happens when you're, when you're so passionate about playing an instrument like the guitar and you, and yeah. you get an injury like that? Yeah, it was a, um, it was a pretty dark period, actually, because I, I loved music and couldn't play. But um, it became a blessing in disguise because it meant that I had to learn to play lap steel and it opened up all these new possibilities that, um, that I probably wouldn't have explored otherwise. So... It was hard at the time, but um, I don't know. There's a lesson there about persevering and doing what you can, and uh, it's been yeah, it's been great now because I have a, another instrument that I love to play. It's a beautiful instrument, and you you two guys have only been playing with each other recently. Yeah, about a year we've been playing now, I think. Yeah, um, Bo's been playing around more for quite a bit, um, and we still do our own stuff, but more and more we do it together because it's uh, so much fun jamming together. Yeah, and you're you're both playing um, solo at that stage. How how does someone come across another musician and strike up that conversation of, you know, I'm digging what you're doing and maybe we could uh, try writing together. Yeah, there's a bit of a bromance there. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. decided, I think, right, here's a guitarist, I've got to play with him. So I went up and introduced myself and then we, I think the first time we ever played together was actually at the good old Winter Night Festival that someone in the crowd, Linton, organ helped organise last year and we decided we'd get up and jam a show and it was fun. So, we, yeah, we took it from there. Was it fairly loose the way you guys jammed together or did you like to sit down, rehearse, write and plan? Rehearsal's never been a strong point for us. <laughs> no, but they've always been, uh, always been uh, fun. They've yeah. uh, been th very therapeutic as well sometimes. Uh, always feel, feel better at the end of them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I was talking to you uh, earlier, uh, Bo, and you were saying you're, you're interested in the music therapy side of, of music. Yeah, um, I think there's uh, some, there's some uh, hidden powers there that uh, I think are quite too well understood yet that I think uh, need to be further explored. Yeah. And you were saying earlier too, some of your favourite gigs recently have been busking in Morwell and uh, meeting people yeah, it's, uh, during the day. It, it's, it's fantastic. You, you, do, um, you get all types. You absolutely get all types. And um, it's, it's really heartwarming to just to know that you can, you can put on, you do, do something you love and people can appreciate it. And it just puts a little, uh, little sunshine in their day if they're uh, having a rough day or... Mm. Some people are having a great day and it makes it even better. So that's, yeah, yeah that's, it, that's even better. In general, how are you finding the spirit of uh, people around more well at the minute? Oh, I, th I think uh, some of the stereotypes are uh, well-founded, but uh, I think there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of good people there that are uh, doing the right thing. And uh, it's surprising, actually, that more people are very charitable uh, mm. for, the, for buskers. It yeah, makes, so. yeah, being there, it makes a real difference to the town to have music in the streets. It just does liven things up. And having busked a bit elsewhere too, Morwell is comparatively a really generous town. People don't necessarily have a lot to give, but they always support and they love having music around. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's noticeable. Yeah. It's a great way to get out and meet people and play. And you also do the festival circuit, Dan. And, it, and it's ended up taking you uh, overseas as well? Well, I snuck in a few little shows. Um, I visited the US last year through some study I was doing, which was great, and got to sneak in a few nice house shows, which was great. Um, and I have some good friends over there. I love Appalachian style music, American old time music, and so I managed to yeah, chase down some of the Appalachian mountains and find some old timey stuff, which was really great too. Was that hard work to find the gigs when you got over there? Or you... I was lucky, I, for, for, I had a friend who, um, who lives over there who used to live in Melbourne. We used to play a lot in bands in Melbourne, and so he helped tease some things up, which was great. But um, yeah, you know, I think the life of a musician 
anywhere is hard. It's a lot of admin <laughs> to go out and find the gigs and um, promote them and make it work. But yeah, I was lucky. And I know some of the couple of songs you've played already, there's a lot of uh, social themes in the songs. Uh, how much of this, is this music is uh, about our local community here in Gippsland? Yeah, I think there's, um, it's a really interesting time for the Gippsland community for lots of reasons. Um, some, you know, challenges facing it, but they're challenges that are facing lots of communities around the, around the country. And I guess that, um, yeah, there's opportunities with that to, to try and build um, community and build other ways of doing things and, and a project that I'd like to give a plug to that I'm involved with, that Bo's also involved in, it's called the Earthworker Cooperative, is one of those examples of a project that's trying to build um, a better way for us to meet our needs that is more equitable, fair and sustainable and I think, um, yeah, some of that obviously comes through our music, um, if not our banter at the very least, yeah. There's, um, yeah, I think we, we live and breathe lots of what we think about yeah. and feel, yeah. You know what would be a great way to get your music really heard? is to plug into that massive Marshall stack I have behind me. <laughs> it's inside that it's a bit thing. intimidating, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a band called Frank coming here later on. They're going to plug into that thing. I don't think we could get more variation in tonight's two bands, in fact. Some beautiful stuff you guys are playing. Now, Trent uh, over here, he's very busy online. Have we got a message from the Morwell footballers yet, Trent? Not yet, no. So we'll, uh, we'll keep waiting. But our number is 04 489 or leave a message on our Facebook live feed. A lot of uh, talk about your new look tonight, Glover. People oh, questioning whether you've had some... Uh, facial surgery done uh, but Charlie Walker would let you know uh, would like to let you know that you're wearing a terrible shirt oh uh, that's the Frank shirt they're yeah. on later tonight Charlie will be on the drum so he must be out the back uh, maybe it's more about the, 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 the fit uh, <laughs> Trace <laughs> Lund <laughs> Trace Lund fit says the, uh, the word I, I, I spent ages ironing that shirt for him today too I should what, say what was it? no <laughs> Trace Lund beautiful Dan love your music uh, also Tina Bartle ripper talent tonight super stoked for Frank Michelle Grafmans mm. says pretty cool as did Mike Forward and we've had a photo sent through this one has come through from Kieran and Beck uh, and they said they're watching and loving the show as always so thanks for sending that through guys looks fantastic um, now it is Father's Day today by the way and uh, we, we, we've got a story up later on about uh, some musicians that have fathers who have also been musicians and you've got a musical connection as well in your family? Uh, yeah, yeah. My father uh, was a uh, bit of a prolific singer around these parts back in the uh, back through the nineties and early noughties. Um, yeah, that's where I got my start. I uh, picked up the guitar, I reckon, uh, pretty early on, maybe two or three, and didn't take proper lessons until I was six. But uh, yeah, that's uh, it's been a bit of a legacy for him to pass on to me. And uh, and he was in the Melbourne Bitter Band. <laughs> yeah, ripper name. <laughs> Wonderful Australian name for an Australian yeah, band. Yeah, a bit ahead of their time. I think the hipsters <laughs> will be uh, a bit confused by that. Yeah, one. I reckon. <laughs> now you guys have got time for another song for us tonight. I'll uh, let you guys introduce it, and uh, can't wait to hear it. Please welcome back Dan Musil <laughs> and Bo Atkinson. <laughs> So we're going to finish off with um, a couple of original tunes of mine that um, I've thrust upon Bo at late notice. So I uh, hope you enjoy them.
come and listen to your music? Um, check us out on Facebook. We are, we're playing in Mall at Vault once a month, which is fun. And we're playing pretty regularly around, yeah, well, the next one is probably the Vault one. But um, check us out on Facebook. Yeah. Any plans to record together as well? We've done a little bit. Yeah, we might tip you up, Brett. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The studio's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah come yeah, to the studio. Uh, the Spectrum yeah. Studios yeah. as well. That's right. Tell the world. And uh, thanks for being so um, socially conscious as well. And please keep spreading that word of inclusion and, and love and everything that's beautiful about this part of the world. It's fantastic. It's a good couple of guys. I think you'd agree. Now, before that go, yeah, round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. I almost forgot, there's a very important part of the show. Aiden, our cameraman, he turned, uh, oh, he had a birthday the other day. I almost gave away the answer. He's a very young looking man. Now, if you look at this photo here, it's very hard. He's like the Benjamin Button of the Spectrum world. Uh, very hard to know his age. We've had one guest so far. Uh, someone guessed he, he was 27, but it's actually older than that. Can you guess Aiden's age for a lovely prize? 32. Yeah, 29. I was going to say 32. Well, well make your mind up, fellas. I can't take two bits. Yeah, I don't know. 30 and a half? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 30 and a half. He's just had his birthday, so it doesn't really make yeah, sense, true. does Yeah, it? I suppose. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he's older than 30 and a half, believe it or not. It's unbelievable. So we'll, we'll take, keep that for the next contestants. Thanks very much, guys. Um, <laughs> Trent, how, how's, it been, how's it been online? Yeah, it's been really good. We actually have a plan to cut Aiden in half and count the rings. Just to work out how he actually is, yeah, yeah. age. And as Jeff uh, pointed out today, there's only really one ring. Uh, okay, so we've had some <laughs> <laughs> photos come through. Uh, the first one jokes. has come through from uh, Joe Tippett, uh, which shows me ironing your T-shirt today. Great. There I am. Yeah, Look at job, that. Mate. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry that my nipples have ruined it. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We're sorry too. <laughs> Greg Allen has also sent a photo through. He says that uh, Dan and Bo are sensational. Babyface Glover looks younger than springtime. Yeah, so almost there's... younger than Aiden. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. Uh, and via Facebook Live, Franco Dowd as his great performance and Kathleen Roberts is listening in Rayleigh in the UK, which is fantastic oh, as well. Right. We so keep seen. your messages coming through. If you're watching tonight or listening, 0411 489 or leave us a message on our Facebook live stream. We'd love to hear from you tonight. Uh, thanks very much to Bo and Dan. It's time for that part of the show that I'm always quite nervous about. It's time to beat Glover. <laughs> And we're back. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Bo's almost thought he'd duck for cover and take his old guitar out then. G'day, I'm Brett. How you going? Clint. Clint, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Let's welcome Clint and Brett to <laughs> the station of the quiz. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who have never seen it before, here's how it works. There's 10 music questions. You get one point for each correct answer, five seconds to answer each question. Uh, for every correct answer, you'll hear this sound. There we go. For every incorrect answer, you'll hear this sound. And when the time is up, you'll hear this sound. All right. Clean, I'll swap your buzzers up. And just because we Sucker. like to do it every show, can we hear the other sound too, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Producer in the back room? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the favourite of his ass. Very good. comical, very comical. All right, let's test your buzzers. Uh, Clint, you can go first. Yeah, so All right. good reaction time. Glover? Man. This one for the... It sucks, it doesn't blow Now remember, so. if our contestants get a question, feel free to give them a clap, and of course, if they get one wrong, just boo them. All right, we're ready to yeah, go. Clint's question. only playing on his toes here, by the way. He's only <laughs> asked about five minutes ago. Yeah, that's true. Let's give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even know where he is or what's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> he just came to pick up the garbage bins out of the front. <laughs> All right, so question number one, uh, and this, uh, this is a little bit different for you. Peter Garrett is well known for some of his unique and unusual dance moves. Can you please demonstrate these? <laughs> The audience will be required to uh, pick the winner with their applause. So well, let's you buzzing in, see you first, Clint. Well, we're just going to get you. All then. right, Clive, oh, here we go. go. All right. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. All right. <laughs> let's go. Come on, Clint. You got to. <laughs> Rem remember, the audience could be on your side here. Um, here we go. Um... Just go for it. Let, let it go, Clint. <laughs> hey, that's pretty yeah. good, too. That's, that's the good. one. So, that was more accurate. So we'll, we'll just, uh, for Glover, give it a clap if you thought his one was the best. <laughs> oh, there we go. Well, that's all right. So that's, <laughs> that's a point to you, Clint. Well done. All right, let's uh, get the next question. Queen, yes, the band, are touring Australia in 2018, but who will be taking the place of lead singer Freddie Mercury on stage? Yeah. 
Yes, Adam Clint. Lambert. Correct. Oh, Fantastic. Wow. Well you. done. Very impressive, Clint. Oh, you got your work cut oh, out for you out. tonight, Glover. In 1989, Prince wrote and produced music for which well-known superhero? <laughs> Batman. Correct. The Bat Dance is one of the greatest songs ever written. That is true. <laughs> Next question. Which music streaming service recently called it quits in oh. a... St- yes, Clint. Pandora. Correct. Pandora. Well done. All right. All right. This is a one you need to listen out for. Finish the next line of this 1991 Lou Bega hit. A little bit of Monica in my life. A little bit of Erica by my side. A little bit of Rita's all I need. <gasps> yes, Brett. A little bit of paprika from the seed. Incorrect. <laughs> Clint. Um, this would be on high rotation on your car stereo, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't it ever. <laughs> a little bit of Tina is what I need. Oh, oh so I close. See. What I see. You know, can, can we yeah, give no, half okay, points? That's pretty close enough. Yeah, let's give a point. Yeah, all right. We'll give you that one. <laughs> well done, man. Well done. How did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> it's all Years in our subconscious. <laughs> all right, so uh, next question. How old is Rolling Stone singer and guitarist Keith Richards? <laughs> <laughs> 158. <laughs> Correct. No, that's not right. No, he's, he's still younger than Aiden. Uh, <laughs> Clint, your answer? 75. Oh, that was so close. It's actually 73, so you both missed out. Sorry. Don't give it to him this time. All right. It's tight. All right, next question. Which Gippsland town was Ian Molly Meldrum born in? <laughs> Brett. Orbost. Correct. <laughs> well done. Clint's still back. in front. Have you seen the scores here? 4-2. Four 4-2, two. Four two. right. Here we go. Which Four. band celebrated the 20-year anniversary of their farewell concert with a return to the same stage on the steps of the Sydney Opera House? <laughs> <laughs> Clint, correct. You, Clint? That is correct. <laughs> All right. Here's another one you have to have a listen for. Let's see how good you are with this one. Let's hear the audio first. Here we go. Great song. Good song. All right. Name the German ju- uh, pop duo who scored a hit with this song in 1989. Millie Vanilli. Correct. Bonus points if you can name a member of the duo. Oh, who knows that? <laughs> Gordon. Incorrect. It was either Rob or Fab. I think uh, Gordon was their adopted brother. Uh, 1990, of course. Well, 1990, they confessed to being frauds. There you go. All right. Our final question tonight. Easy one. David Campbell is the son of which Aussie rock? Jimmy Barnes. Correct. What are we up to? Is that it? That last question? Yes, it is. Ah! Clint wins. Congratulations. Oh, well done, now, well done, mate. Well done. Too before good. we before we wrap it up, uh, is is there a prize for Clint? Have you brought in a copy of your well-known but very underselling album done? No, because they're sold out. But <laughs> of don't worry, they are. the reprint's coming soon. No, I just forgot to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Clint, we do have a, a one final question for you, and uh, it's a bit of an on-the-spot thing, but who is going to perform on the next episode of Live at Spectrum? No idea. <laughs> Would you like to do it? Oh, I'd love to. Well, there yeah! we go. That is the correct answer. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> we didn't know how that was going to go, so well done. That was Beak Lover, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, We're going to roll the outro. There it is. <laughs> thanks, mate. Thanks. We'll see you next month. <laughs> oh, host. All right, let's get one more round of applause for Clinton. <laughs> oh, man. Clint Wilson. Appearing next month as well on Live at Spectrum. Now, we're getting into the next story. Uh, like yes, yes let's, let's do that. We all need a break. All right. <laughs> now, uh, being Gippslanders, we've all, always known that the wide open spaces and more time on our hands leads often to creative thought and innovative ideas. Some of our city-dwelling cousins have taken the time to venture to our neck of the woods and check out our healthy and friendly music industry. Live at Spectrum joined Music Victoria on their second annual Victorian Music Crawl. The crawl takes Melbourne-based booking agents and music industry reps into regional areas of Victoria to showcase some of the great venues and artists available to them. On this leg of the tour, Gippsland opened its doors to showcase what our region's musical landscape has to offer. So it's called the Victoria Music Crawl. We basically load up a bus full of uh, you know, band bookers and booking agents and managers who don't leave Melbourne enough because Melbourne's got so much music. 
and we take them out on the bus and take them to all the different venues, churches, uh, community halls, pubs, you know, Mexican restaurants, wineries, and we uh, work with the local communities to put on, showcase the best local acts. So we're often rocking up to a venue or a big pub at 11 in the morning and you know, it's a pretty unglamorous place at 11 in the morning, so to show off the room, you need to have a band and the lights on and the action. So uh, we've we'll been going for three three days now, um, from Morning to Pinchler and through Bass Coast and in Gippsland, South Gippsland now. We did one uh, all the way up to Echuca in February and we're doing another one to Warrnambool at the end of the year. So it's really twofold. It basically introduces the industry in Melbourne to all the amazing opportunities to tour along the circuits. Um, but it also showcases all the local bands um, to basically show what amazing artists you have out here and hopefully give them more opportunities in the city and around Australia. It's an honour to be able to showcase what Gippsland has to offer to uh, some city slickers and you know hopefully they uh, they understand the vibe about what it's about just having a good time and enjoying music and doing what you can I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I mean there's a lot of people who really don't have anywhere to go um, you know professional artists who it's their career yes they manage it but it's really hard to get people to pay um, if you look at it from a venue point of view and you're paying a, you know, an artist or a duo, whatever, four or $500, you've got to have security if it's amplified, you've got another four, five, six hundred dollars you've got a thousand dollars to start. It's just hard reality. Uh, I mean, Menian's probably the most famous regional venue in Australia. Um, that's, there are a lot of great halls around here and we can't make it to Bundy, but we showed them that experience as a classic hall experience. Uh, Sandy Point's now got um, halls selling out as well. So uh, there's obviously room for more of those shows. We went up to the site, um, Aidan McLaren took us to the site where Hills Are Alive is. So he told us the whole backstory about his family being there three generations and showed us the site and uh, the history of the festival there, which is really impressive, very grassroots. Um, you know, that's a beautiful thing. All of this music is community, grassroots, and it's made through uh, love. I'm an import to Gippsland too. I grew up in the Southern Mallee and I came here in early 1982 and I couldn't believe the breadth of music styles and the quality of musicians that were around Gippsland. It was just unbelievable how good it was. Uh, councils are getting involved in music, you know, they have, a real, they have a real role, I believe. So we're working with councils to write music strategies and action plans uh, for them to understand the needs of the industry, you know, um, support uh, your entrepreneurs because if uh, they'll make mistakes, but be nice to them, be caring, support them. Because if they, you know, if three or four people don't um, decide it's all too hard, then the scene will collapse. So really, a lot of it's introductions as well, letting everyone get together and understand each other's needs. And there's a lot councils can do without even spending any money. They can cut red tape, they can make things easier, they can help find venues. So um, yeah, I've just been really impressed by, um, you know, a lot of the passion, some of the champions of the music out here. Um, we're going to go to Terralgan and check out those venues there as well and just take the bookers through. So um, three great venues there of different sizes. Question, who would be your dream artist to have come and perform here? Uh, Robert Plant, without question. So there you go, you asked me. <laughs> you go get me Robert Plant from Zeppelin, mate, and bring it on. <laughs> we'll work on it for you. Thanks, Eric. All right. Um, good My afternoon. band was lucky enough to tour with Cosmic Psychos on a regional tour last year and uh, you know, the place would be empty or everyone's having dinner one minute and then I uh, would think you're coming on in three minutes, you know, how's this going to go? And then just like that, you know, 100 people arrived, standing there, they're there for the first band. Last night everyone was there at 8 o'clock and Mania. Um, very hungry, very respectful audiences. Regional acts have their own stories to tell too, you know, there's hundreds of bands in Melbourne that all look the same and sound the same. We're really encouraging regional artists to you know, sing about their stories here, to dream big, um, and to when they're you know doing interviews to actually talk about how you know what's their point of difference, what town did they come from, or regional area. So there's huge benefits for regional music, and every band in Melbourne needs to be touring regional. You know, it's building up loyal fan bases over time, um, and we're really encouraging councils to a lot more all ages gigs as well. Um, you know, there's a very uh, exciting rock and roll scene, Southern uh, Morning to Peninsula, for instance. They've got something going on there, and uh, you know, kids and adults are all going out together and playing together, and uh, we're trying to encourage that through freezer groups and uh, as much as possible too, because it's uh, you know something like this is perfect for the whole family. You know, it may get cold in winter, um, but you've got to support these scenes. Venues do it very hard in winter, often not making any money, and hopefully uh, summer might sort of help them even out. Um, Certainly encourage people to go out and support your local music. Um, go and support bands you might not even know. You know, bands shouldn't have to be played on Triple J for you to think they're any good. That's certainly not the case. Um, you know, 
go out to a venue that you uh, see putting on good bands and you think, oh, well, I don't know that band, but if I trust that booker, I trust that they're doing good music, I'll just go anyway. That's happening more and more. Um, and take a few risks on, on, on the music. Um, and uh, yeah, if you've got kids, you know, put them through music lessons, take them to as many gigs as possible. Um, because uh, once a kid sees an amazing music experience, you sort of got them forever and we want to make sure we don't lose that generation of kids to bloody computer games or, or whatever. You know, we want to get them to music early and um, you know, it's a family affair, especially out in the country. Thank you, Rambo, we appreciate that. No Here's your crew up here and... Uh, we'll Have a look at them. Motley a bunch you'd never it's wish to meet. Slow, They're going to start without you, you get up there. Friends from Music Victoria coming down to check out what we're up to here in Gippsland. Of course, we already know the uh, strong music scene we have down here, and it's great to be able to share with them and create opportunities for musicians in our area. Now, our next guests are a young, hard-working group of energetic friends, mostly based in central Gippsland. They are heavily influenced by the heady days of the 70s and 80s Australian pub rock scene. So please, crack a couple of tinnies, and welcome to Live at Spectrum, Frank. <laughs> Brett, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. We're Frank. This first one's called Time Traveller.
down a bit. This next one's called Summertime Blues and it's pretty self-explanatory. I had too much to drink again Remember asking you to be my friend I know I woke up with you In the middle of summer, the summertime blues In the sun, the summertime blues In the sun, the summertime blues to drink again I texted a crazy ex-girlfriend I joked that I want to get back with you The funny part that it's the truth The sun, the blues In the sun, the sun blues In the sun, the sun blues In the sun, the sun up on the couch again I thought I'd call up all my friends In time to function half past two Just in time for the summertime blues Yeah, 
Frank, 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 give a clap for that. Come on, hey, come on, Teddy. Frank, 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 Frank. There are a lot of fun, these guys. Uh, it's great to have them here in the studio tonight. Ivan. Yes. You're the only guy in the band that's not from Sale, is that right? Yes, I'm from Melbourne. I'm a Melbourne boy. So how did this happen? You, you met these four guys on, online, or...? <laughs> how does this happen? Yeah, I met them all on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> nah, um, Jim was at uni in Melbourne, and... Um... Come in, Jim. Come in and have a chat. Sorry, mate. That's <laughs> alright, it's alright. Right. <laughs> not your teacher or anything. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, Jim was at uni in Melbourne, and I think we met through a mutual friend or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was, he was looking for a guitarist, and I was playing bass back then. Hadn't, had never sung before. <laughs> and I, I was playing bass for the band, Jim was singing, and he was playing drums. And yeah, we've somehow morphed into this. Did you, <laughs> did you have a love of the same sort of music? Because, it, I mean, it's very reminiscent of the 70s and 80s sort of pub rock scene. Yeah, Jim, has, Jim was actually a big fan of um, a lot of modern techno music. Is that right, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a changed man. Now, this is no. not true at all, obviously, <laughs> because every time I see a photo of you, you're in your blue singlet and your thongs and you're cracking a can of VB. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what, which begs a question, actually, because we were just talking about Melbourne Bitter. <laughs> so is it Melbourne Bitter or VB? And what's the difference? I don't know. I've been told that uh, the Melbourne Bitter, <laughs> yeah. they make the VB in a big vat, right? Yeah. And then w when it over overflows, they scrape the top off and, they sweep and it goes onto the ground. They sweep it all into the corner and then they collect it all up in buckets and they put it in cans of Melbourne Bitter. Yeah. <laughs> so the leftovers of VB, so. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Johnson. That was yeah. good. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> yeah. so, so what is it about that period of time? What's, what's made you be... Uh, not obsessive, but uh, you've got a love for that time. Uh, I don't know. I, I love the boogie in the music. Love the. <laughs> does, it, does that sound silly? Doesn't. Uh, <laughs> no, I love the boogie. I love the rhythm, really. The, the feel of the beat. And yeah. you've got a group of uh, great mates behind you as well. Would you be able to introduce everyone in the band for us? Yes. So yeah. we've got Charlie on the drums. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> uh, I've played with Charlie for years. Uh, it's good to have him back on drums. He's been with us for a couple of months now. It's good. Pat's on the bass. Pat's. Uh, he's been with us a couple of months as well, but it's good to have him on board. He's an awesome bass player. Grant's been with us from almost the start. He's an awesome keyboard player, and he opens up a lot of doors for the band. And so I think <laughs> Grant. It's incredible, I think. <laughs> I know people are watching right now and they're looking at Grant and they're going, hang on, I've seen that guy somewhere before. <laughs> <laughs> Where have we seen Grant before? <laughs> no, you don't, you don't want to talk about it? <laughs> no, I'm not to talk about it. Grant was on a wonderful quiz show called The Chaser. In fact, I was... <laughs> and I'd love to have him on Beat Glover one of these nights too. He, did, he didn't do too well, but he did. He, he represented us very well that night. So, Grant, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you well, for what you did that you. night. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> no one clapped that. <laughs> <I'll back. laughs> now, you guys have got to be uh, one of the busiest uh, bands in Gippsland. I mean, you seem to be playing every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I, th I, think, I think we've worked out we've only got two or three Saturdays free until the end of the year. So, it puts so it into perspective. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're obviously really enjoying it at this stage. You're not, you're not wearing out. You're, you're young no. and you're loving it. I'm loving it. A lot of heavy gear that we have to move around, but we just mm. love it. What are some of your favourite places to go and play, Van? Jack Ryan's is probably my, be my top. Um, what do you love about that place? <laughs> yeah. There you go, ding ching, <laughs> sponsorship, nice. It just gets very rowdy as you can tell from the state of our voices this, this morning. <laughs> you do have some great uh, things you do during your show. We are unpacking a trailer earlier today. Yes. And the first thing I noticed at the back was a pair of uh, jeans <laughs> that had Velcro down the sides. <laughs> uh, what's the go with that, Ivan? <laughs> Well, we use that for Eagle Rock. I think everyone here knows that when you play Eagle Rock, you've got to get your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was just a sort of the natural progression of things. We did ask, <laughs> we did ask the producers if we could have the rip-off yeah. jeans in the show tonight, <laughs> but we weren't no, sure what was underneath. We wanted to so. keep it G-rated for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> right. And uh, also a big part of your show is the meat raffle. Yeah. Which you're never ready for. You're just sitting there having a beer and the band's about to start and all of a sudden Ivan comes around and says, oh, $2 for the meat raffle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what, what my... What made you want to do that? No, it started off as a few ideas to try and bring people to the gigs and um, you know, keep everyone involved. And I suppose the meat raffle is just a traditional sort of thing. Get everyone involved, buy a ticket, and, you know, 
have a barbecue the next day. <laughs> the deal was that we always come the next day, so with you know, throwing a slab of beer as well. So. And you do have a great crew around your band as well. You've got a lot of them here in the audience tonight as well. Do they all have one of these wonderful uh, Frank T-shirts? Which so. I'm ashamed to say is yeah. the biggest one you have. <laughs> and it's very tight. I said to Charlie earlier, you get some bigger T-shirts, you'll have some bigger fans. <laughs> Literally. These have been quite popular though, these T-shirts. Yeah, well, we had a, a black T-shirt which said Frank drinking crew on the back. And that sold out within, I think, Two gig or something. <laughs> yeah, we sold them out pretty quickly, and we've got the blue ones left. What comes? What's the first thing uh, when you're prioritising? Is it is it the music or the drinking? Oh. <laughs> what are you thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> a bit of both. A lot of fun, Trent. Yeah, we should go to one of these Frank gigs one night. I Absolutely. think we'd have a great night. We well, they've come win. to us tonight. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. We should go and see him out in the rally. It'd be great. And you've been getting some feedback online as well. Look, we have had so many messages come through tonight. I just want to say, and some of these names will be familiar to you guys. Alex Whitehill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Sam Caffrey. Scott Anderson. <laughs> uh, Christine Shingle says, go Chuck. Daniel Howell. Uh, Will Whitehill, Frank bringing the party. Hayden Ward, go Frank. Uh, then for Dan, Erin Kelly said uh, she loved what you did, which is great. Uh, John McShane and Susan McShane sent a message through with a photo as well, and they said that they uh, loved the set that uh, Dan and... Um, Bo. Bo, sorry, sorry, I was too busy looking at the next message uh, performed tonight. And uh, we've actually had a message come through from Bryce Wright. Uh, Bo's extremely talented and a real gentleman. His dad was a great bloke. Melbourne Bitter Band were one of the best pub rock bands in his uh, in their day, and Chris would be proud of his son. So that's a really lovely message that's come through tonight. Yeah, I think that deserves a round of applause. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll get through this. Matt Borg is uh, listening in Barcelona tonight. Right, eh? Uh, says, a very smooth show. Tristan Reese, shout out to Dan's Earthworker Co op. Uh, and says get involved. Now, this is a really important message in Clover. I just want you to be ready for this. Oh, no. No, right. no, no, no. You're actually going to like this. <laughs> Not like <It> usually. Says, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brett, you always tell your music students to watch your show. Yeah. And we know this because you talk about it all the time. Yeah. This is, are you proud of me yet? I've got to admit, it's pretty awesome, and that's from Chelsea Crisp. Oh, there you go. She's now, watching. Now, I know that would mean a lot to you tonight because you've been trying to get your students to actually watch the show. I so. know. Why don't they listen to me, Trent? <laughs> <laughs> Same but reason. Chelsea, good on you, Chelsea. Yeah, we don't listen to you in meetings, do <laughs> Yeah. I've actually got three uh, ex-students in the studio tonight, and they happen to be in, in the band. So uh, <laughs> Three ex, not like your shirt. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah look. Hey, 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 hey. No, no. <laughs> So James, Charlie and Pat used to be at the 5 for 5 primary school. We had the boys band Damn and, we, pl and yeah. we played a lot of ACDC. Oh, yeah. only two or three. In fact, there was, and there, I remember when um, we couldn't think of anything to play, we say, James, just play that, that Irish boppy thing you used to do. Yeah. Can you play a bit of that now? Do you still remember how to play that? Of course I do. It's, Scot <laughs> it's Scottish, by the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That was it. You know, it went on and on and on and we loved it. It was a good time. So it's just great to have our students watching tonight and in the band tonight as well. But I'll stop carrying on now and let you guys get on with your next song. Sure thing, Please welcome back Frank. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everyone. This next one's called Angel Eyes. And 
to kiss your lips And we held each other as the rain came pouring down now Locked together as we kept on going through the night, yeah You had me dancing, baby Say yes, don't say maybe This feeling I never knew And then you took me home with you Hazel eyes, you drive me crazy Robin girl, you're so hard to catch The long brown hair, yeah, you're a lady Set me on fire, watch me turn to ash This was 31 and a half. Frank, how old do you think Aiden is? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, have a, have a team meeting, guys. Uh, while you're doing the team meeting, we'll ask Trent if he's got any messages online. Yeah, we do. We've had one come through from a very good friend of the show, Matt McQuillan. Uh, and oh. there's a photo with it as well. I just want to get that up on the screen because Matt said he loves your new look lover. <laughs> and he's anyway. just about right, I think, Macca. <laughs> And Mako, he will be getting his just deserves in the next program. I think. <laughs> That's very good, though. <laughs> so, Frank, how old do you think Aiden is? Uh, we had a collective discussion. We agreed probably around 30. No, so we're, we're going to add 30 and 30 and 30 and 30 and 30 to be at 150. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's more than 31. It's less than 150. So... Uh, yeah, that's, that was a ridiculous guess, guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Frank will be back very shortly to take us out for the show as well. Now, after almost two years of hosting Live at Spectrum and being, asked, uh, uh, being able to ask artists in our region about their various influences, I found a common thread in most of the answers. Parents and carers play an all-important role in shaping the minds of the next generation. And being Father's Day, we decided to dig a little bit deeper. On this Father's Day, we recognise the special bond between dads and their children. But what happens when you throw the extra magical ingredient of music into the mix? We spoke to three talented kids and their musician fathers to find out how music can further strengthen the ties of even the closest of families. Way, way back when I was a toddler, I, um, there used to be sing-alongs in the house and there was a piano in the house and they used to have there'd be people around at Christmas time and they'd sing, you know, probably, uh, you know, old Scottish songs and things like that and things that were popular way back, you know, before my time. They were old songs to me, you know, but uh, that was 
as far as an instrument, was a piano that was in the house. I used to have a bit of a tinkle on that and a bit of a play on that. We were playing up at Malden at the festival and, and I can still remember uh, Maria, my wife, holding her up on the table. You know, and she was sort of bopping along to the band that was on, that was playing, so she, she was immersed in the, in the music very early. <laughs> Watching the band as a young kid just always was part of my life and when I decided I wanted to play an instrument it was she was the only oh no there was two females in the band but she played the fiddle and I took a shining to it from about age three I think it was about she said that's what I want to play <laughs> maybe not in as many words <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah definitely it's I went to the fiddle player in our band and she originally was a classical player and a teacher still, and uh, that's where I learnt originally mm. with classical, do, doing a Stedfords and playing in orchestras. But I also, on the side, was playing in Dad's band, which sometimes stirred my teacher up a little bit because it was, I would embellish a bit here and there, which was not Not classical, the classical way. <laughs> but, you know, it, it got me, it won me a Stedfords. <laughs> family tie that just everything, you know, it, you, you get a feeling, you know when the other person's going to, to do something, you, you know, you just, it, it sort of gels, you know, because of that. Mm, no, I definitely say the same, I think it's probably why I haven't really branched out yet, I always, when with playing with others, I don't feel safe as when playing <laughs> with Dad because we know each other and exactly what's going to happen and we might pull faces at each other because one of us is stuffed up, but, you know, it... Yeah, it's There's just, a, uh, she, that's she pulls now. faces at me a lot for making mistakes. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I th it's, it's an absolute joy to be able to play music with a family member for, for a start. It's just, um, it's just, uh, it seems to be a natural, natural thing and, and it's just, uh, it, it enriches your life so much and enri enriches a family, I think. <laughs> I think I was in my early 20s and I went to, it was a, open, a Ning's Jam Tin and got up and done a few songs and some people approached me to join my first band. So yeah, so, so tell that, us about that, band. that was Stone Age and yeah we rocked. We, we played all the, all the RSLs, all the 50s to 80s rock and roll and had all the dances there, yeah, so Dakota probably come along to a fair few of those gigs as well, so yeah, so. I let her find find it herself, but I, I was, you know, if you want to play an instrument, just let me know, and we'll we'll go from there. As long as it's not recorder. <laughs> and I think it was grade six um, was my first actual guitar lessons, and I did it for a term and then left school for year seven. But yeah, so I really enjoyed the guitar lessons, but I think I enjoyed the guitar lessons from Dad better. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, actually I did. I'd done guitar for a term as well and I still remember my school report. It said, we can't fail you in this course even though you've done none of the work that we gave you, but there's more to life than Guns N' Roses and Metallica. <laughs> Probably sounds really cheesy and you'd want me to say this, but stay awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've taught her well. <laughs> when we arrived in Australia, we moved to Maui and I was very shy, and I still am, but I would, they had a dance around in one of the halls in Maui, I can't remember what it was, and I just went, something to do on a Sunday afternoon, and that somebody knew that I sort of sang a little bit, so they threw me on the stage, and I only knew one song and two chords on the guitar. <laughs> it's Now or Never by Elvis Presley. And I sang it, and, I, and then, as soon as I got off, I went home. I didn't want to see anybody. Then somebody knocked on the door, 
Would you like to join a band? And that's, that's how it began. Um, yeah, I remember being a young fella, um, always wanting to go to Dad's gigs. Um, I'd be on the side of the stage like that, you know, my idol sort of thing. And um, yeah, I guess that's, you know, everybody wants to sort of follow in their father's footsteps. And I knew from a young age that that's, that's what I wanted to do. Seeing my dad up there, it's like, well, that's what I got to do. Having growing up with that and, and it sort of inspired me from a young age, as I said, like my dad does that, so that's what I got to do, you know, it was always there, you know, so I was lucky enough to, um, to, to know that from a young age and then to, to actually join the band was, was even better, you know. Dad taught me, I think it was Peter Gunn. Peter Gunn. You know, uh, oh, dun, dun, the old dun, Peter Gunn. Yeah, I, yeah it, I sort of taught myself what I could for, for a little while and then um, I you know, realised I wanted to take it pretty serious and take it as far as I can and um, I gave, well Dad actually gave Tony a call, um, got me into Tony Calabro and um, that's, that's when, when the ball really got rolling, yeah. So. There's, I, I cannot emphasise enough what a pleasure it is to, to have my son beside me playing. It's great. What yep. about you, Tom? How do you feel? Well, I don't know, it's almost indescribable, really. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, everyone that's, that's played on a stage together knows that there's, there's this thing, there's this, this some kind of connection no. that you get. And uh, to, to be able to share that with my dad, it, it's, it's really special to me. You know, it's, it's brought us very close. And when know, we're, we're good mates. When we play a gig, people can actually tell how well we sort of bounce off each other. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is, and it just comes natural. Yeah, it's, it's just, excellent. you know, it's, as I said, it's a really special yeah. uh, thing, you know, and, and, and I'm, I, yeah, I couldn't be more sort of proud of that. I don't know whether you know that he had a problem last year with his arm. You know, we're pretty close, like we're best mates, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, dad, dad would ring me sort of every day to sort of see how I was going. He knew I was pretty down. I mean, music's my life. You know, that's a cliche thing to say, but it really is. That's what I've built my whole entire life on. And, and to lose that was, uh, was, you know, to lose that for, for some time was pretty, you know, pretty bad time. But um, I had Dad's support and, and, that, and that meant a lot. That was... so, so, it, so for me to be able to be here tonight, to share the stage with my dad, it just means the world to me, really. Yeah. You know, to, to have it sort of taken away from me for, for some time, it's really made me realise yeah. how special it is and how much it is uh, just such a special thing. I keep saying special, yeah, but, but it is, it is, well, it is special. Know, it is special. There's, there's, there's no other special. way. It's, it's, it's indescribable. It, it really is, you know. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. to that story. It's just a fantastic to see uh, fathers getting involved in music and that goes out to all the mothers and carers out there as well who are involved with uh, music with their children. It's a really special experience if you can do it with a family member. It's just, just that even a little bit better. Who taught you music? Mum. Yeah, yeah. Mum, thanks. She taught me uh, chopsticks. Dad, dad, nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to talk uh, about <laughs> that, that. No, Dad tried to teach me cricket. Right. Yeah, I was awful. And now you're a music teacher. Two hands for beginners. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what they say. <laughs> uh, we just want to say a special happy birthday to Lauren Saul, who's watching tonight. Big supporter of the show. So happy birthday, Lauren. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're a really good audience yeah. tonight as well. We're pretty Great happy. sax player with the steaming monsters. Absolutely. And uh, we also just wanted to mention that this show uh, will be uh, viewable online, 7.30 on our YouTube channel on Thursday night and 9.30 on Foxtel. You can watch Live at Spectrum every Thursday night on Foxtel. So at there we are, made here in little humble Gippsland and beamed to the whole country. Yeah. And uh, coming up on the next episode, we've got a... Well, they're all special guests on the show, but I, I, I'm pretty excited about the next one. Yeah, well, of course, we have Clint Wilson, who uh, whooped yeah. you in the uh, We <laughs> sucked the into that tonight. tonight. <laughs> just broke him in. Good on you, Clint. Thanks, Thank Clint. you. See <laughs> yeah, you on the next episode of Live Spectrum. Uh, and we're pretty excited to announce uh, P76 have recently reformed uh, for some shows and we're going to have them here in the Live at Spectrum studio. And we thought that we'd, we'd get uh, one of the members of P76 to come up and He's have a very chance. nice looking. His name's Jeff and he plays come the drums up, in Jeff. P76. Please give him a round of applause and welcome him. Hi, right, Jeff. <laughs> Let's all squeeze him. 
so look nice? P76, you do look nice. Oh, it must you. be nice. I uh, must be nice. <laughs> P76 is a band that we've, we've touched on in the past, but finally you, uh, you're back together. We How's have. it feel? We just needed a little bit of a break for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. um, but look, yeah, it's, it's been something we've spoken about for a long time. And I, I guess it's just been a matter of having the time to do it, you know, with family and, and work and all these other commitments. We've never been able to get together and, and actually get into the same room and, and rehearse to play. So, well, when, when you spoke to us about a, a couple of things a few weeks ago, yeah. that sort of sparked us and Danny, Danny was all for it. So, and Millsy's keen, so You're we thought we'd, we'd give it a crack. Yeah, well, I suppose it took five years just for the paparazzi to stop chasing you around. <laughs> oh, I know. I oh, know. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You know, three old blokes, you know. Now like that you're suck doing it, you... suck the guts into it. Yeah. That's, that's what yeah, it'll be. Right. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Macca. Um, now, you, 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 does it feel good to be back and doing it? And does it make you think the last 10 years you should have been doing it this whole time? <laughs> um, it is. It's, it's good, actually. After having a break, and all three of us, uh, well, probably Danny... Still does a, a little bit of solo work, and he's playing with the Little Murders as well. Um, not not flat out, but Tim and I haven't really played. Oh look, it's been a couple of years for Tim. It's been a year for me. I've had a break, and it's it's been really good. Um, so it's felt a little bit funny um, to to readjust to uh, having to to play again, yeah, you know, because right. I, I haven't played in a little while. So this this will be good, and I'm actually um, ready to give it a go again, yeah. and, and I'm excited about playing. Well, after Which the last is episode, great. we saw that clip of you with your handy paradiddles on the, the desk at home. That you've was been fantastic. You've doing yeah. a lot of dabbling in artwork lately too, Jeff. Oh, I've Jesus. <laughs> artwork, yeah. I've yeah. been getting requests from all kinds of people for, yeah. for my work. Keeping yeah. you busy. So yeah. We might share some of that on the next show. That'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's now one that, I know what you're talking about. I, got, yeah, I, right. I made one for Wayne. He really loves it. Mm, right. the, <laughs> next episode of Lives Back P76 and Clint Wilson. We're really excited about that. We'll be on uh, TRFM as usual and live here. What date is it? It is Sunday, October 1st for those playing at home. No worries. We'll see you there. And to take us out tonight, I might let Jeff introduce the band for the final time. All right. For the last time tonight? Yes. All right. Frank. Woo! <laughs> 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 Thanks, Jeff. I'm going to crank it up a bit. This one's the first song that Jim ever wrote. It's called Finish Just For You. Get it started, get it started. And now we're finished, we're finished.
just for you We're gonna get it started 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 And now we're finished We're finished just for you And Clint Wilson, thanks very much for the end of and Bo Atkinson and Frank. We'll see you next time. Good night. That's the way it's going to be, little darling. We'll go riding on the horses, yeah, yeah. Thank you, go, little darling. Oh, I'll pick you up, I'll pick you up. Thanks, mate. Fantastic. Love you, mate. You got her. Private Spectrum is filmed in front of a live studio audience. So, Whoop! And my phone just went off. And the, and the gigs keep coming. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I should have mentioned that before about this. Hello? Yes. Yeah, okay, hang on, because I'm, I'm, we're doing something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, hang on, hang on. Hey, hang on. Dick? Dick? <laughs>